Today the question we're going to answer is what is a derivative and basically what is calculus? That's what we're going to talk about here. So say we have a function x squared minus 3. We want to find the average rate of change, the instantaneous rate of change, that's sort of what we've been doing so far. So let me just pick a point here and say we wanted to find the average rate of change between that point and that point there. How do we do that? Well really what we're doing is we're connecting those two points and finding the slope between those two points. And that's going to be the average rate of change, right? And the way we do that is if we're looking here, we're really what we're doing is we're finding the change in the x value and the change in the y value. So we would call this down here delta x and we would call this delta y. And the average rate of change we know is just going to be delta y over delta x. We know that. We're comfortable with that. So that's how an average rate of change looks. But say we wanted to find the instantaneous rate of change at this point. Remember, the instantaneous rate of change can be visualized as the slope of the tangent at that point, right? So if that's the tangent there, we want to find the slope of that tangent. Well, how do we do that? The way we've done it so far is we've basically taking this point here and we started moving it closer and closer and closer to that and we're finding the slope of that secant as it gets closer and closer and closer to that. So for example, uh, if we take this point down here, okay now we've got a closer tangent, uh, a closer secant to that tangent and we get even closer, we can go here, right? And we go even closer, right? And the closer we get, we basically have the slope of the tangent um, based on the slope of the secant from those two little points there. So if we look at this part right here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in there on this part here. And what we really have is we have our function, right? Again, this is sort of just zooming in on that one part of the function. And here's the point we're trying to find the tangent at. And the tangent is going to look something like that, right? And what we're really doing is we're picking two points very close together. So really what you're doing is you're, you're doing the same thing as we were at the average rate of change. We're finding sort of the change in the y and the change in the x, just like we were here for the secant, but we're just doing it on a tiny, tiny, tiny little scale. And when we're dealing with a tiny, tiny, tiny little scale where these numbers are so small, so close to zero, we don't use the delta y and the delta x anymore. We use dy and dx to represent the change in the y and the change in the x. And really, the reason why this is used is because deltas are Greek capital Ds, basically. So in order to represent a small change, we use lowercase d. So this is what you can think of it as. Small dy, small dx. It's like a small change in the y over a small change in the x. So the slope of the tangent, we can represent as dy by dx instead of delta y over delta x. And this here is a common notation we use for a derivative. And all a derivative is, a derivative is just basically a fancy word for the instantaneous rate of change of a function. or the slope of the tangent. And the way we usually write it is like this. So the derivative, we say the derivative is equal to dy by dx. A small tiny little change in y over a small tiny little change in x. And the slope of that line is basically equal to the slope of the tangent. When we zoom in really, really, really close, when we make those points basically uh, really close to each other. So that's what a derivative is. It's basically what we've been doing so far in this course. Now, to look at a few other terms here. So that's what a derivative is. What is calculus though? Well, calculus basically has two parts. And one of these parts, which is the focus of this course, is called differentiation. And all differentiation is, it's just a fancy word for saying finding derivatives.
that's all differentiation is finding derivatives. So finding the slope of the, the tangent, basically at any point. The other part of calculus that we're not going to cover in this course, but you may do in future calculus uh, courses, is called integration. And instead of finding the slope, what integration is, it's uh, finding the area below a curve, actually. It's finding areas. So just, just as a quick uh, areas, just as a quick uh, demonstration of what I mean by that, if you're looking for the area, for example, below the curve between these two points, you're looking for, for example, this area here, we would use the other part of calculus, which is integration. But again, that's another, uh, that, we'll save that for another course. So essentially what we're doing here is we're finding slopes of tangents, and that's what we've been doing all along. Now, if you remember, the way we've been doing this so far, finding the slope of the tangent, is using something called the difference quotient. And what the difference quotient does is it plugs in a really small h value, which is the difference between this, basically what this delta x is, right? A really, really small value there. And um, what that does is it finds, it allows us, taking the limit as h approaches zero, allows us to find the, the slope of the tangent, or in this case, the derivative. We call this, in calculus, we call using the, uh, the difference quotient, finding the derivative, by first principles. Okay, when I say find the derivatives by first principles, again, what I mean is using the difference quotient. Oops, D I F F E R. Okay? So, for example, say I wanted you to find the derivative of this parabola here. Now, I've given you the equation of this parabola here, um, y equals x squared minus 3. The way we find the derivative, for now, is by using the difference quotient. Now, actually, what we're going to do in this course is we're going to find lots of shortcuts so you don't actually have to use the difference quotient, but for now, that's what we're going to do. So, just to make it a little more formal and calculus-like, we're going to use this notation for the derivative. So, we're going to find the derivative of this function with respect to x. So, again, we're going to look for the change, the small change in this function here, x squared minus 3 with respect to x. So see, all I did using this notation, we're finding the change in the function over the change in x. So we're basically just finding the slope of the tangent. So this is what the notation looks like. And what we're going to do to do this is we're going to take the limit as x, sorry, as h goes to 0 of f at x plus h minus f at x all over h. So again, this is just slightly different notation for what we've been doing so far, but it, all it is, it's finding the slope of this function uh, as a general equation. So you can do that. Try that now. Um, you can pause the video now, try to find that um, the difference quotient there, and then we'll go on. Okay, so hopefully you found that, and I have it actually done here. Let me just take off this page. So here is the difference quotient. And what we end up with is 2x. So after I do this, I just plug in all my values. I plug in the function at x plus h minus the function, function at x, and I get 2x as my difference quotient. So what we call this now, this is the derivative It's the derivative of the function x squared minus 3. Now again, in calculus, what we're going to do is we're going to learn lots of tricks. So we can go directly from this to this without actually having to do all this work. And there's a few patterns that we're going to learn to do that. But just to show you what this looks like in terms of our notation. So we already did this notation. So basically, you can write, you can write the derivative in a few ways. So we showed that it's like saying d by dx of x squared minus 3 is equal to 2x, right? So the derivative of x squared minus 3 is 2x. Another way of showing it, if we call this function uh, like y, y equals something, we could say that it's y prime is equal to 2x. 
or if we want to use our function notation, f prime of x equals 2x. These are all just different ways of saying the derivative of x squared minus 3. Okay, so this is just another way of writing it. The prime means derivative, right? And f of x, or f prime of x is 2x. That's just another way of saying the derivative of f of x, if we call this function f of x. Okay? So essentially all we're doing is the same thing we've been doing, just with a little bit of notation, uh, difference in notation, that represents the derivative of that function.